at FI. Our research group is Strand Lab, stands for RF Analog and Digital Lab for Advanced Signal Processing Circuits. In this video, we will be presenting a glimpse of our work on beamform. In the first part, we will go through the basics and the theory of beamform. Next, implementation of an RF system using the Silings RF SOC will be discussed. And finally, some of our work will be presented. Hope you will enjoy the presentation. The prolific growth of mobile communication has led to huge bandwidth requirements. To satisfy this, it's required to move the carrier frequency up in the spectrum. For that, emerging millimeter wave, 5G, and MIMO based wireless systems use phased antenna arrays. In this video, we discuss the implementation of a four element uniform linear array in receive mode. Each antenna element of this array operates at a center frequency of 28 GHz and provides a bandwidth of about 800 MHz. The advent of radio-enabled digital hardware, such as Silings RFSOC, allows the combined realization of programmable digital fabrics with high-speed ADCs or DACs on the same chip. An RFSOC platform such as Silings ZCU1285 shown here contains 16 high-speed ADCs and 16 high-speed DACs on the FPGA chip. We will demonstrate the configuration of RFSOC to obtain measurements for a millimeter wave antenna array system in the presentation. Phased array systems enable the use of beamforming. Let's go through a review of the beamforming theory. Assume a wave is arriving at a phased array with an angle of theta. The first element will receive the wave front at t equals to zero, and the second element will receive it after a delay of delta t. The time delay delta t is equal to d sine theta over c, where d is the inter-element spacing and c is the speed of light. If the output of each element is coherently delayed and combined to create a stronger signal, the combined output gives the wave front. This is called beamforming and it is equivalent to a spatial field. There are different methods we could perform this operation. Based on that, beamforming can be divided into three main types as analog, digital, and hybrid. Since shifters, time delay units, and lenses can be used as analog beamformers, and however, the implementation of analog beamformers is relatively expensive and troublesome. For example, phase shifters and time delay units used in beam steering operation operate using discrete steps. Therefore, the resolution of these units is finite. Let's consider phase shifters as an example. Since C is equal to F lambda, the time delay can be replaced by an incremental phase shift of 2 pi d sine theta over lambda. From equation 2, we can find the resolution of theta as shown in the third equation. If the phase shifter resolution is delta phi sub LSB, we can derive the array list of resolution for an n element array as shown in equation 4. Achieving such higher resolution using analog phase shifters is expensive and has limited degrees of freedom. Digital beamforming has advantages over analog as it provides more degrees of freedom. Digital beamforming is normally implemented using FFT cores in digital hardware. We will demonstrate the implementation of digital beamforming for a 4-element 28GHz antenna array in this video. FFT cores in these beamformers can be replaced with approximate FFTs to save hardware resources at an allowable cost of accuracy. We have published several articles on this area and their links are given in the description. Hybrid beamformers consist of both analog and digital beamforming components. For example, a lens as the analog component and an FFT core as the digital component forms a hybrid beamformer. We will discuss and demonstrate this in the final half of the presentation as well. Signal processing in phased antenna arrays of news FPGAs. Therefore, each of the antenna elements requires a dedicated RF chain and a high-speed ADC. As these ADCs are expensive and power-hungry, they create a bottleneck in RF systems design. We have proposed several solutions for this issue. One of them is frequency division multiplexing each of the narrow band antenna inputs 
to be sampled using 1ADC. Links for these papers are available in the description. We are using Silix RFSOC Chrome 85 FPGA for our demonstration. Udara will explain more about RF system's design and configuration of RFSOC. In this part of the presentation, I will cover a short tutorial on how to implement an RF system using the Silix RFSOC. I will demonstrate how to create a digital downsampling circuit using the Silix SSR block set in MATLAB. Here, I show a typical RF front end that receives a signal from the antenna and enhances it to the full dynamic range of the analog to digital converters. The ultimate goal of the RF front end is to improve the signal to noise ratio. The noise figure is the ratio between input SNR and output SNR. It tells us the amount of SNR degradation introduced by a particular component. This is the equation that is used to calculate the cascaded noise figure of the RF chain. Notice that the gain of the first element has the most contribution to the reduction of the cascaded noise figure. Although it is tempting to add the LNA with highest possible gain as the first element, it is not favorable to the linearity of the system. This is the equation to calculate the cascaded input third order intercept point or ITOI. At this point, the output signal and the third order harmonic will have the same power level. If ITOI is low, that means the linear operating range of the RF chain is also low. The gain of the first element has the most contribution to the re reduction of the cascaded ITOI. Therefore, the RF designer should carefully select the gain of the first LNA, then introduce multiple amplification stages to get the required cascaded gain. A well-designed RF front end will output a signal that utilizes the full operating range of the data converters. For RFSOC, the normal operating range of the data converters is 500 mV, roughly minus 2 dBm in a 50 ohm network. An essential step in configuring the data converters is to set up the sampling clock. We use the system controller software for this. This tool can be downloaded from the Silings web page. Here I show how to program sampling clocks in the ZCU 1285 board. From the clock set pane, four clocks are related to the data converter. The LMK04208 chip generates a reference clock that is used by the three LMX2594 PLLs. To set each PLL, we need to provide a text file that contains the register values required. The system controller is shipped with several preset text files. If you want to generate a custom frequency, that is not present in the presets, you have to use the TI Tix Pro software to export the required text file. Once you have the text file, place it in the clock files folder and provide its name in the system controller. This will set the sampling clock to the desired frequency. To configure the data converters, import the data converter IP to Vivado block design and double click. This will bring the configuration window. You can enable the required ADC DAC and select the sampling rate you use to program the clocks using the system controller. If you are using a high sampling rate, you might have to use multiple samples per clock cycle. Then the digital design has to support vector processing. An easy way to design such a system is to use the Silings SSR block set in MATLAB Simulink. This is the Simulink design with the digital down converter. We will export this design as an IP and import it to Vivado. After creating the IP, you can add it to the Vivado block design by add repository option. Go to IP catalog, from there select add repository. Then select the generated IP folder to add it to the repository list.
After this step, you can select the generated IP from the search list. This is the Vivado design which shows the imported down converter design connected to the data converter IP. Then we generate the bitstream and program the device. This is how you realize a digital circuit on the RF SOC using the Vivado tool. Next, Shravan will demonstrate implementation of multi-beam beamformers for millimeter wave receivers using the EZCU2085 RF SOC platform. So during this final part of the presentation, I'll go through a test example where I'll discuss about our implementation of a 28GHz 4 element receiver array using the ZC285 RFSOC platform. This test bed is used to realize multiple beams using the FFT based digital beamformer and the lens plus focal plane array based analog beamformer. Let me start with the details of that. We designed the 4 element uniform linear array to operate at 20 GHz with 850 MHz of bandwidth as per the 5G commercial standards. Each antenna element has been built as an 8 element series fed vertical pad subarray. The purpose of series feeding is to provide additional gain to the antenna array in the vertical plane. Also notice the tapering of the antennas in the subarray. This ensures lower side lobe levels in the antenna pattern. This antenna design is ported to CST Micro Studio for performance evaluation. Finally, a uniform linear array of 4 elements is developed with the spacing of 0.75 lambda and is sent to fabrication. The fabrication is done in-house at FIU using LPKF laser machine. The measured and simulated S11 plots for the 1D array are shown here. We could observe a shift in resonant frequency from 28 to 28.5 GHz in the fabricated prototype. And this might be expected due to the uncertainty in the thickness and dielectric constraint of such. The antenna ports are connected to four IQ down converter modules HMC1065 LP43 from analog devices. These operate in the frequency range 27 to 34 GHz with a conversion gain of 9 dB and noise figure of 3 dB. These modules mix down the incoming 20 GHz signals to baseband up to 4 GHz. Also, they internally contain a frequency doubler and therefore the LO input can be driven at half the frequency of the RF band. As shown here, a centralized LO distribution network developed using a 4 way splitter from many circuits is used to simultaneously and coherently drive all the channels from the array. In the final stage, the IQ down converted signals are converted to differential from single ended using balance to interface with the Xilinx RF SOC ADCs. We use 8 ADC channels to synchronously sample the incoming 4 IQ signals. In this work, Four simultaneous receive mode RF beams were realized by using a 4-point FFT digital core across the spatial samples. For digital circuits design and implementation, we have chosen the Vivado Verilog Plus IP integrated tool free. The 4-point FFT algorithm developed using Verilog is attached to the data converter IP in the Vivado block design as shown here. For this work, since we plan to use 8 channels, the IP block is configured to contain 8 RF SOC ADCs with 8 polyphase streams. The output of each polyphase stream was synchronized to a single reference clock of 245.76 MHz that was derived from the analog sampling clock. The other blocks in the design help in providing the synchronous reset and to generate the required clock signal from 300 MHz LPTS oscillator. Final stages of digital design contain a squared and integrated block for each channel to measure the power and thus plot beam patterns. This design is synthesized, implemented and the bitstream is generated. One crucial step in a proper design of our system is the calibration. In this work, to calibrate the RF receiver chains, the gain phase mismatches were pre-measured using a reference signal with respect to one receiver chain. These mismatches are compensated by employing a complex multiplier at each phase of each channel at the initial stages of digital circuit. The figure here shows the digitally calibrated versions that are fed into the digital beamforming course. Once the receiver chains are calibrated, we are ready to perform the measurements. 
Here, I show the experimental setup. A horn antenna is used as the transmitter to send test signals centered across the 28 GHz band. The frequency of the LO input to the receiver was set to 13.95 GHz so that after the frequency doublers, the IQ mixers received 27.9 GHz and finally produced 100 MHz higher. This allows us to bring down the RF center frequency to base band 0. To emulate the angle of arrival for beam measurements, the receiver setup is mounted on a rotation platform as shown. To aid the measurements, we developed a Python script that communicates with the RF SOC and rotation platform simultaneously. Let me briefly cover the steps performed by this script. Initial lines of the script include tickle commands to program the RF SOC with the required bit files and signal probe files. Once this process is done, the script talks to the rotation platform to rotate it to the end fire direction. At this position, the ADC start to capture the samples and the beamform outputs of each beam of each phase is used to compute the received energy for that particular direction of arrival. This energy value is read from the attached probe and stored in an array dataset created in Python. Then, the rotation platform is moved to the next angle of measurement. We hold on for a while to store the computed energy and append it to the original dataset. This process is repeated for all angles under consideration. After the final measurement, the Python dataset is stored into a .mat file so that it can be imported to MATLAB for post-processing. I show here the simulated and measured array factors for the 4 beam digital beamformer for 100 MHz IF. Simulated array factors are generated from fixed point simulation of the 4 point FFT design in MATLAB Simulate, and they do take the element pattern into effect. The plots convey that the measured beams from all the 4 beams of FFT are recorded well with the simulated beam patterns, thus, validating the test. This testbed is also being utilized in performing multi-beam beamforming using the lens plus focal plane array based approach. It is known that an N element uniform linear array placed at the focus of the lens will provide N simultaneous beams with the beam direction depending on the spatial location of each element of that. In this ongoing project, we are using the 4 element QLA as the focal plane array for an ABS lens as shown. The experimental setup remains same. Whereas the digital circuits only contain the square and integrate blocks. The early measurements are shown here. We observe four simultaneous beams arising from the lens. The observed gain is much lower than expected, and we believe that this may be due to improper positioning of the array, where theory assumes that lens expects an isotropic point source at its focal plane. The other effects include the uncertainty in the knowledge of direct constant of the fabricated lens and material losses in the images. The consideration of this effect is ongoing. So that concludes this presentation. I hope this gave you a brief insight on how to develop RF test fits using RF associated digital hardware plan. For further information about this work, please go through our publications itrp.com. The links are mentioned in the description. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please contact me.